Wow. Well, thank you, everyone, for inviting us, and it's good to be back here again. Um, yeah, I think we need to give it up for Pastor Lyle on the drums here today, huh? Yeah, great job. Okay, glasses. I appreciate the, uh, the Scripture readings today here especially in Psalms 124 at the end, the last thing we said, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty awesome help (laughs) who made the heaven and earth and that we have access every day. Um, There was a little expression I heard a number of years ago, uh, and said that I don't have good days, I don't have bad days, I have days of grace. Isn't that good? You know, because, uh, and in those days of grace that we have, even today, we can call on the Lord, and He's faithful to hear us. And in this portion of Scripture, it talks about Israel. They were always in trouble, always in battles, and They called out to the Lord continuously, and He delivered them. And that's why I just, I'm so grateful for this, this verse here today, and God's faithfulness. And then in the next one too, when we went on to, to Romans 12, and I want to just talk just a little bit about this one this morning here too, um, where it talks about, I'll go ahead and read the first eight verses here. But it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. It says that you present them. Now, we weren't forcing you to worship this morning. and That's one thing I I love about the Spirit of God. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. It isn't love, joy, and pressure. Isn't that good? God leaves that choice up to you if you want to sing, if you want to present yourself to Him, a living sacrifice. I don't know about you, but the more I sing and the more I worship, the freer I get. And that's why music is such a powerful tool, and I love it. And and it complements the Scripture. It's a tool to help us come into the presence of God and be with Him and worship Him like we were created to do. And so I love this where it says, present yourselves a living sacrifice. And don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Boy, this is a continual process, isn't it? (laughs) To be transformed. And that you may prove what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God. And here's where I was thinking this morning, too, about us and as the body of Christ, that through the grace given to me, to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt each one a measure of faith. And we have many members in one body, just like we have many different instruments here this morning to make one sound. There's many different gifts in the body of Christ. There are many different gifts in this congregation. And, you know, this morning, as, as a minister, as, as a preacher, it says when we come together, we're supposed to exhort one another and challenge you and admonish you. And I want to this morning, you know, uh, if you've appreciated the music and the gifts that we've just offered up, you've got a gift too. And you need to use it. God gave you a gift to, to serve Him and to love Him. And, and I want to encourage you, whatever that gift is. I know some people in this church got a gift of making coffee. <laughs> yeah, if they have Johnson's, amen. Yeah, that's a gift. That's a gift. Maybe it's even making the hot dish too, but whatever. Use it and do it. And so it says... Having then, verse 6, different gifts according to the grace 
that is given us, let us use them. Here again, the choice, it's an admonishment, it's an encouragement. You've got a gift, use it. Don't let it lie dormant. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, here again it says, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches, teaching. He who exhorts, that's what we're doing right now, in exhortation. And he who gives with liberality. Boy, we could have fun with this one. <laughs> give, give liberally. And I don't know about you, when offering time comes, sometimes or a special need arises, <laughs> I'm going to be very candid and honest with you here this morning. My wife is a better giver than I am. When we pray about a missions or something we're going to give to, and we talk to each other, and I said, well, honey, she says, what do you feel we should give? And, I, and uh, I'll say, well, Okay, maybe fifty dollars. She said, "Okay, we'll give a hundred." And I said, "Oh, it just, you know, it hurts." And when I, and, and for me, what I've learned is that if it hurts, then you better give more. I didn't expect a lot of amens out of that, but uh, you know, if it hurts, then you're not free yet. And I, this, the Lord is continually freeing us. And that's when we just give a little bit more. Give with liberality. Give with liberality, it says here. And he who exhorts and, then, and to give with liberality and lead with diligence and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And finally, the last scripture today here was in Matthew. This was so good. Matthew 16, 13 through 20. And this is where Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? Who do, the, yeah, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Wow. What a question for this generation and this hour and this time. Who, in other words, who is the real Jesus? You know, Time Magazine and some of these, they put out these things. They, and then they put out the historical Jesus and Channel 2 does you know, the historical Jesus. The world is still asking this question, who is Jesus? And Jesus asked those who were close to him, the disciples. He said, uh, who do men say that I am? Who the Son of Man am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some said Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And really the challenge lies with us. Who is Jesus to you? Is he the Sunday morning Jesus or the midweek service Jesus or the occasional Jesus or the, the man in the sky? Who is he? And I believe the Lord would want to challenge us. I appreciate it. Pastor, pray that, Lord, that we might know you. That we might know you. And more and more. And so some say John the Baptist. And he said, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered in verse 16 says, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You know, this morning we sang the song. I'm so glad we sang it, David. I come to the garden alone. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I'm his own. We just moved to a uh, a new little house in Minneapolis, and uh, <laughs> it has lots of vegetation. I was talking to our, our host couple here about how we've been invaded by vines. Our house is uh, covered with vines, but the backyard is so beautiful. It's got all kinds of flowers, and, and I've just had such a wonderful time just sitting out there 
and just being with the Lord. Now, pastor, for a while we had so, so many animals with all the vines and stuff, I was ready to put on a robe and become St. Francis of Assisi and, you know, preach to the squirrels and stuff out there. But it was, but the point being, this is an hour and a time for us to know the Lord for not who we think He is, but who He really is. That same revelation that Peter got, God wants us to have. Blessed are you, for my Father revealed this. God wants to show us something about who He really is. That's what true revival is. God coming and saying, I'm going to show you what I'm really like. And you know where He does that? In that when we come to the garden alone. When we come like the children of Israel did and said, Lord, we got all kinds of enemies around us. Our help is in you. I call every day. I said, Lord, this is the day you made. I love David. What you said, this is the best day of the rest of your life. This is the day that God has made. Lord, help me today. Make the most of us. Help me see something of you in this day. And Lord, if there's something with the gift. You know, I want to give a quick testimony before we close here this morning. Last week, our whole family got to go up the Detroit Lakes. And now our immediate family, my sons, when we play, that would not happen here in this congregation this morning. It would be the volume levels would just be off the charts. But we got to play a motorcycle rally up in Detroit Lakes last weekend. And while we had fun. Our youngest son, my brothers are laughing because they know Timothy. He just let it rip with the drums and we had the electric guitars and we played and just rocked out and all the bikers came. And there was one Vietnam veteran that was there from Detroit Lakes and, and he had struggled, he struggled a lot with the post-traumatic stress. And he come up at the end of the conference. He says, you know what? Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your music. Because today, I had no depression. I was out of my depression. It just helped me step out of it today. He came to me again, came twice and said that. And had we not used that gift and just go and be who we are and let Christ be who He is in us, get up there and just sing and just be that. I'll tell you, this is a powerful tool. But again, I want to admonish you, church, you have something. You have something. And to use it and continue to use it. And there's going to be enemies like the children of Israel had enemies to try to prevent us to use our gift. Oh, you're not good enough. Thank God there's no American idol in heaven. Boy, that group down in Tyler, they need help. Thank God. That we can use our gift, that humble gift, and use it for the glory of God. And there's going to be enemies to try to prevent that, those voices. But I want to encourage you, be faithful to do what the Lord has told. That still small voice that's spoken to you. And use that gift. And in doing so, you know what? As you give, it will be given unto you. And you're faithful in giving that gift. God will start to show you a little bit more about who He really is. And what he's like. Amen. Amen. Thank you this morning. Amen.